When is it time to euthanize your dog? This is a tough question, and it's a question that I've had to ask myself over the past week. So let's talk about it. As our dogs get older, of course there are changes in their physical bodies and sometimes cognitive changes. And I, I'm a person that really loves senior dogs. I love the grizzled faces, and I'm willing to do a lot for my older dogs. Some of my older dogs have had bowel incontinence or urinary incontinence and it's just something that I'm willing to deal with at the end of a dog's life given how much they give me during a lifetime. But then there are changes that affect quality of life in more basic ways. Things like pain, inability to move or some lack of mobility, things like losing appetite or just a general malaise and a kind of depressed state. The other factor can be disease, something like cancer or specific conditions that come up that are either treatable or non-treatable. Now with conditions that are treatable, one of the things that I have to consider is what is the cost of this treatment? And when I say what is the cost, I don't mean the financial cost. I have to think about is this invasive? Is this fair to my dog? How does my dog feel about this? It's just, it's really easy to want to extend our dog's life because we want our dogs around, we love our dogs. But we have to consider how are our dogs gonna feel about this and what kind of quality of life are they going to have at the end of this? And of course there are financial considerations, we have to think about that as well. But for me, when I consider a surgery, and I've done some very expensive surgeries with my dogs, I do consider what are the other ailments that this dog has, what is the potential that this is really gonna make my dog's life better. And if the answer is yes, and if it is treatable and there's going to be a significant help to my dog, then I will consider the surgery. So my dog, Asha, woke up and she could not walk on one of her back legs and I was really alarmed. I went to check her leg and it was lumpy and hard and I was actually really shocked because I'm a person that checks my dogs a lot. She'd been to the groomer not too long ago. She'd also been to the vet. She'd had blood testing. It's like this, whatever happened, this happened quickly. So I got her to the vet and I was shocked to find out that she had been diagnosed with cancer. She had a tumor in her leg and a spot in her lungs. And I've not had a lot of experience with cancer in dogs. I've had a lot of other conditions that my dogs have had, but not specifically cancer. So it didn't even occur to me to consider that this could be cancer. Now my dog, Asha, is 14 years old and she has a lot of senior symptoms. She has probably a little bit of Asha. canine cognitive dysfunction <laughs> or doggy <laughs> dementia, as I call it. She's got a weakness in her back, which makes it easy for her to fall over sometimes. She's hypothyroid, which is not really that big of a deal. I'm hypothyroid as well. Last year, Asha had parathyroid surgery and her prospects were really good for that surgery. She did very well from the surgery and the outcome was excellent for her. Now, over a year later, Asha's 14 years old. She can't see very well, she can't hear very well. And like I said, sometimes she falls over because she has a weakness in her back. So at this point, we've reached a different stage in her life. One of the most important questions is, is this treatable? Now, Asha is not going to be able to walk on that back leg again. It's absolutely painful for her. It's, it's big, it's hard, it's a very aggressive tumor. So it's not something that can be fixed. She also has a spot on her lungs, which looks to be cancer as well. So is there possible treatment? Yes, there is treatment possible by going to an oncologist. At this point, I know that financially the costs are expensive, but more importantly, this is not going to fix her. Whatever treatment she could get, expensive or not, it's not going to get rid of the tumors that she has. At this point in her life, with poor vision, with poor hearing, 
with a weak back that makes her lose balance, her quality of life prospects are really very poor. And in fact, when I went to the vet, they offered to euthanize her right there and then. However, for me, that was such a shock. I was not prepared to do that. And not only that, I really find it important to be with my pets at the end. And currently, because of the COVID issues, a lot of people are having to leave their pets, and I understand how painful that is. So I told the vet I wanted to think things over, and I also asked about in-home euthanasia. In Asha's case, removing the tumor is not an option. It's really visible to me that her leg is really painful. I've had another dog in the past that had weakness in his back to the point that he couldn't walk anymore, but it wasn't painful. But I would drive him in my golf cart. He would still play a little bit of ball. He had a doggy wheelchair and his life was extended because I knew I could still provide him with some quality of life. Asha's case is an entirely different thing. I can just see when she's walking that it's painful for her. And the other symptom with her is there's a lot of panting. It's not continuous, it's not nonstop, but when she's resting and it's not hot, she is starting to pant. And this has all just come up over the last weeks. Dogs can be stoic and Asha is in particularly a really stoic dog. And it makes me think that she has had some pain and she's managed to hide it pretty well because we had a lot of vet appointments, she's had a lot of checkups. And there was nothing that showed up in the blood work that we didn't actively deal with. So whatever's happened, it's happened pretty rapidly and her quality of life literally changed overnight. A lot of people have very strong feelings about euthanasia, about when and how and, and exactly at what moment. Some people feel really guilty because they believe they've left it too long. Some people end up feeling that they've let their dog go too soon. It's a really personal thing and I don't believe there's a right or wrong. The only thing I object to is when people completely ignore their animal's pain or disregard an animal's pain. And that leads to another point that dogs and cats and animals, they do show us that something's changed. And sometimes it can be very subtle. For example, with Asha, since her cancer diagnosis, she's been panting. And I hadn't noticed that before because I don't think she was in the same level of pain. But there was something last week that I noticed she just really wasn't wanting to offer some of the simple tricks that she normally likes to do. And Asha loves doing her tricks. And even during the last week, she's offering her paw to me and wanting to do the little things that she spent her whole entire life doing because they bring her joy. So when your dog is not doing the things that they enjoy, or if they're acting a little bit depressed or not their enthusiastic self, you do have to think, is pain a factor here? Is there a reason for this change? And also there are levels of pain. So that's why it's so important to talk to your vet when there's any personality change, because we can't always know what's going on internally with a dog or what's sore with a dog. And even though I was going regularly to the vet, we still didn't know that there was cancer developing until just this last week. In Asha's case, while I made my decision, I also have two prescriptions of pain medication for her. At times, Asha can be bright and perky and very alert, and that makes it harder, really, to make a decision because it's just not cut and dry the way sometimes you just absolutely know a dog is failing. So I spoke to another vet about the decision, and basically, what she told me, I thought made a lot of sense. She said that even though a dog is bright and perky, you know that she's got pain, you know that she's got an incurable condition and an untreatable condition other than the pain meds that she's on. She said, it's really kinder to let them go when they're still feeling good about life than letting them go to the next level. Now. That's not to blame anybody for any choices that they've made, but just to be conscious about the choices that you do make and to consider this as a reassurance that, you know, you're not letting go of your happy dog 
you're actually just relieving them from that next stage of really painful cancer. And in Asha's case, because she's got cancer in her lungs, I don't want to see her getting to a point of gasping for breath. I have known of someone whose dog reached that end point that was really quite alarming. And I do believe people sometimes ignore signals before that happens. And again, not to blame anybody, but it's really important to make conscious decisions about your older dog and to be watching for those changes because the one gift that we can give them is euthanasia. And I'm gonna be really honest here. My dad had an incurable disease and we did not have an option of euthanasia. And literally he had to starve to death in order to die. And he was heavily medicated and we did all that we could to make him be comfortable or the, the people in charge of his medical care did that. But that was a very painful experience. And so it reminded me what a gift it is to be able to give euthanasia to our dogs and to not make them go through all of that. One thing that my dad always said to us is that we're kinder to our pets. And going through that experience really showed me that it's true that we have this huge gift that we can give our pets. And I don't like to judge too soon, too late, exactly what your timeline is. For me with Asha, I did have the option to euthanize immediately, but I know for me it was such a shock and I don't know what the options would have been. It seemed as if I would have to leave her at the vet. I really would not want to do that. Asha absolutely hates the vet clinic. She's a very shy dog. I absolutely wanted to be with her. I also wanted to process what was going on. I needed a bit of time to think things over. She was given pain medication. The vet was very good about offering that as an option. For Asha, I know that it comes down to quality of life for me and her quality of life was not going to improve. So at this point, Asha is scheduled for euthanasia two days from now and Rather than focus on the euthanasia, I'm gonna focus on spending each moment in the best way possible for her. She is going to get the nicest foods. We did some video and some pictures and she got a lot of treats and she was happy enough to offer some tricks without me encouraging her. She has a bit of sparkle in her eye still, and I wanna keep that sparkle right till the end. We're gonna go visit her grandma. We're just gonna do all the things that Asha loves to do. She wanted to walk on the field today, and she her leg is very sore, and it's really hard for her to walk on her own. But I let her walk a little bit on her own, and I followed behind her, and I have a harness, and I have support for her tummy in case she falls over. I'm gonna give Asha whatever she wants and she is pretty sleepy. I'm not gonna push her too hard, but I'm gonna treasure each moment. For me, this is, this has got to be a special time. Of course, I'm really sad. And of course I could spend the whole time crying, but I really want to give her the best ending possible. Unfortunately, this is the deal with dogs is they live usually maybe a decade and a half if we're lucky and then they leave our lives and at times i know for some people for me included this is so painful but it's part of the deal when we get a dog and as much as i feel sad and as much as it's hard i know that the reason that i'm sad and the reason that it's hard is because she has brought so much joy and entertainment and love and healing into my life. And she's affected many lives around me. I know a lot of other people are sad as well. Asha has been an amazing dog and I'm sure you, if you're watching this video, you have a similar amazing dog. And I remind myself at these moments at the end of our pet's life that that is why we feel sad. It's We feel sad because they brought us so much joy and they brought us so much enrichment to our lives. And so I choose to focus on 
that joy and that love and that wonderful experience that I've had that's been called Asha. Your heart isn't really broken. It just hurts from having grown so much bigger because that's what happens when you love a dog. <laughs>